Hello friends, let's talk about one more topic today where we are going to compare the policies which behaves like a sim similar way but their underlying architecture and the way those are implemented and the way those are applicable to your use case are different. Okay, so let's try to understand. I have set some parameters on those parameters. We'll try to compare these two policies and then you can decide based on your use case, which one to pick. Okay, so we are going to talk about JWT validation policy versus auth 2.0 token based policy. Okay, so when we're talking about OAuth 2.0 token based policy, so we need auth server here. We can create our own auth server like we did it in a previous um, session. Mule uh, provided uh, auth server. We can create our application. You can deploy it and you can use it as an auth server. Or we can go for an external auth server like Okta. Okay. Any point platform supports to, you know, supports to have multiple external auth server configured on your endpoint platform. You can go ahead and add that. So that is out of scope for today. Let's try to understand like, uh, you know, what is the main purpose of these policies and how these policies are actually works behind the scene. Okay. So these are the authentication workflow. So when we talked about JWT, always it goes with the character. So in this particular authentication flow, there'll be a characters like a client will be a character resource owner will be a character. API gateway will be a character authorization server will be a character resource server will be a character where actually your resource is running. So these characters will be coming to picture in a specific workflow. When the JWT is applied, different workflow. When OAuth is deployed, different workflow comes into picture. Okay. So that backend, we are not going to discuss. Our question is which one to pick and why. So let's go ahead. I have decided some parameters and I have created one spreadsheet. Okay. So first of all, we go to our AnyPoint platform and on any API, we can apply both the policies together. Okay, so you can see here auth closer action um, uh, access token policy and then JWT validation. So we'll note down few things here, very important. Okay, so let me go to the OAuth 2.0 policy edit configuration. Here, if you carefully notice, I I can show you we need a validate token URL. That is the only important part here. And rest of the thing you can configure whether you want to skip the validation or something that is uh, up to you. But the important is this validation URL when you're configuring your OAuth token based policy. Okay. So we'll talk about this endpoint later, but we have used this policy already in a previous session. So you'll understand what do you mean by this. Next policy where we'll be passing all the information about how the token is actually created. Okay, so there is a signing method. So exactly you need to pass the same signing method the way JWT, you know, is created. Okay, length, key length. We can directly hard code the public key so that we can, we can decrypt or decode JWT because JWT will be digitally signed and we can decrypt here by using public key over here. So hard coding is not good idea or that is not the recommended best practice because once your public key is changed, you need to make a code change over here. Instead of that, without any code change, what we can do is we can provide the JWKS keys URL here and that key URL will be pulling the public key periodically on your independent platform. You can set the timing. So default is one hour. So every one hour, you'll get that key over here. Okay. And that key will be used to decode or decrypt your JWT. So these are the important information you can note down from here. So all the informations for the JWT are policy, uh, passing and uh, on the uh, auth 2. Dot, we need only validate URL. Okay, so this is how we can configure our policies. Let's go back. Now, let's compare these two policies based on some parameters. So I have picked some parameters like complexity, performance, token revocation. If your token is compromised, how you're going to revoke it, how fast you're going to revoke it, and security risk. Okay, 
let's start with the main functionality of these two policies okay so jwt is, is self contained okay so this is used for authentication and exchanging information so we can we can we can uh, pass the user client uh, information in your jwt okay so this information can be shared between your api and client application or server and client application okay and this is basically suited for api so let me show you let me show you the the uh, jot, uh, jot token how it looks okay so this is the algorithm and what type of algorithm you have used and this is the place payload place so every jot will be split into three parts and every part will be concatenated with dot or period we call it okay so the middle part you can pass the information you can exchange the information and the bottom part is a signature which i was talking about you can digitally sign your signature and this signature will be decoded on your any point platform by using that public key okay now we'll talk about it more details the internal functionality which one is faster which one is more secure okay so let's go back to the spreadsheet again so the main function of jwt is to authenticate and exchange the information between parties apart from that oauth 2d is a is the latest version and it's 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 its functionality to do the authorization so that means oauth 2.0 alone cannot do the authentication so on top of it we need to use open id so open id plus okay so open open id plus auth 2.0 that will do the job authentication plus authorization for your apis okay and this is useful for a b web api browser applications and resources so this is the main functionality of jwt and auth 2.0 let's look at the advantage of jwt so jwt is self contained what do you mean by that so it will have all the information okay about client that's what we we talked about right so about client so that we can we can <clears throat> we can share or exchange between those parties which means they don't require a separate call to the authorization server to validate the tokens all the information is there in the token itself so we don't need to do that round trip now if you are talking about round trip you will see the latency part here so we are reducing latency to go to the auth authorization server and validate the information all the information is there in the token itself since it is self contained they can be validated quickly without additional network request right and that part is making the efficient when we are talking about performance okay this jwt is stateless meaning this jwt is always stored at the client side this won't get stored on a server auth server that means storage part right that is also yeah you can you can store you can scale or reduce the server load so that means only client side this jwt will be stored other part auth provides the fine grained access fine grained access control we call it so that through scopes okay and specify exactly what resources this token or that token should be able to access okay so one more important of auth 2 dot token is it can be easily revoked so when if it is compromised then in case of jwt that is a cons for jwt there is no straightforward way of in revoking token in jwt case okay but in auth 2.0 case we can easily revoke and that will enhance the security so now you can see that security risk is more in jwt less in auth 2.0 now this auth 2.0 token will be stored both the side client side as well as the server side that means we need a always we need authorization server and always we need to do the round trip to the authorization server to validate the the token whether it's valid or not that will increase the latency over here so that's if you're talking about security part you can choose or 2.0 but if you're talking about the uh efficient then you can go for jwt let's talk about the cons okay so cons are very important so jwt you can decide the expiry if you decide the expiry more then it's a concern okay if your token is compromised then you need a proper 
revocation mechanism and that is lagging over here. So proper management and you can do the short uh, expiry time that will save you here. JWT, as we have mentioned, cannot be revoked easily, okay, once issued, and that is a drawback. But in case of OR 2.0, OR 2.0, you can easily revoke it. There is, they, there'll be endpoint, you can go ahead and revoke it. OAuth cons are, OAuth is little bit complex to implement as compared to JWT, and that requires authoring server and always requires the client registration. Validating OAuth tokens typically requires a call to, you know, always we need to go to the authoring server and that introduces the latency. Now question comes, okay, so each has its own pros and cons. When we can select the policy, for example, let's say your use case is, you know, you need a lightweight, okay, stateless token and that can be validated without additional network request, then you can go for JWT. Your application can handle the security risk. Okay. If that is that application is able to handle that, then you can go for long lived tokens and you can implement proper, proper token management and you can use a JWT. In case of if you need a fine grained access control and ability to revoke tokens, go for OR 2.0 policy. You require if you are going looking for robust security framework with the centralized authentication authorization uh, part, then you can go for OAuth 2.0 uh, policy. If your application can handle additional complexity and performance overhead, then you can go ahead with OAuth 2.0. So each policy has its own pros and cons. It, it has own uh, you know use case where you can use these policies. Okay, you can decide based on your requirement. And that's what I wanted to discuss in this session. Hope you liked it. Share with your friends. If you're not subscribed yet, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.